Hello everyone, I, this is the, yeah, that was just horrible. <laughs> We're going to redo that. Uh, and I didn't have a catch, I didn't have a, I didn't have a stinger line. Oh man, you threw me off, Duck. I'm going to blame you. <laughs> I'm going to blame you. We do have a stinger line. I don't remember what it is though. <laughs> so, <laughs> all right, do that one more time. I'm sorry, John. Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 13 of the Mount Moon Review Podcast. I am the Razgrees with my co-host, the Blue Duck Gold Duck, and this is the Mount Moon Review Podcast where we post leaks faster than you can imagine because Nintendo will actually demonetize our videos before they're even done processing. So that is just... A, I can't even believe how fast we got demonetized last week with our leaks. It was just outrageous. But here we are. So uh, we did not lose anything. I quickly took the video off. So um, episode 17, if you haven't noticed, is not available on um, YouTube just yet because I have to go through and edit out some some content that uh, deals with the leaks or just wait until next week and post it and Nintendo hopefully leaves me alone. So, Duck, how have you been? Uh, pretty good. It was a super busy weekend, and I'm glad because the hype is real for Sword and Shield, so anything I can use to distract me from that and make time go by faster is A-OK -okay with you, me. And we raised money for charity. You you had a busy weekend? Yeah. You did? It was pretty busy. Do you see these bags under my eyes? <laughs> <laughs> So let me tell you about, let me tell you, you about. You just sat on the plane. Oh, let me tell you about this. Because <laughs> there's stuff you don't even know yet. Oh, no. So. But everything I know is really bad. <laughs> well, there's some stuff that's pretty bad. And I'm, there's a couple things I'm not going to mention. So be just if I don't mention them, I don't want them public. Um, but let's just talk about when I tried to leave. So we have um, in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania, this is the second year they've had the LinkCon convention. And uh, we had a League Cup that Duck and I hosted, along with one other um, judge who is oftentimes in our chat. His name uh, is Cod King Vegeta. And the three of us uh, hosted the Gettysburg LinkCon Pokemon League Cup. This was an event, part of our Extra Life campaign. And we ended up, I'm not having the final total yet. I'm hoping to have that tomorrow. Uh, but it's uh, in excess of an extra two hundred dollars. It'll be donated from the, the from the convention hosts uh, in the name of Extra Life uh, for our efforts there. Now, uh, how, how do you think the tournament went? Uh, I think it was pretty good. We had a decent turnout. I was worried with it being in the uh, you know what I mean. Like it's just not a well known area for Pokemon, so I was a little worried with you know what turnout would be but it was, it exceeded my expectations yeah uh, well like that area in pennsylvania it has a um a reputation it has a lot of it it has a lot of competitive high end players uh, a number of which were there and uh it, it, but as long as there's not a known tournament going on at the same time uh we have a ten we did cuz i don't live there anymore we had a tendency to draw very large numbers uh, and we did very well. We had an entire gymnasium. Uh, we didn't fill it, but we had quite a number of people in there. Um, but yeah, I, I thought it went rather well. Um, it, it, there was some people testing uh, when the uh, testing our, our our judgment when it came to uh, some of the calls that were made. Um, yeah. <laughs> and uh, there were, and I think we we exceeded everybody's expectations on that. So uh, a couple key things: if you're ever going to run a league cup or any kind of organized play, put the bloody clock on the wall, folks. It makes yeah, people was... so much happier. Uh, but that's just that's just a little. This is little things, folks. Just the little things. <laughs> but so I went to leave. Now let me tell you about this journey. So I got up. I had a flight out of Harrisburg International Airport, uh, Hair Care and Tire Center, and I, my flight out was at seven thirty. Now the night before, I looked at looked at the weather, and I said, "Wow." My connection flight in Chicago, they're expecting a storm. So I called United Airlines and I said, hey, um, 
there's a possibility this, this flight's going to get messed up. So how about you let me take this other flight that goes from Harrisburg to Washington, Dulles, to Houston, Texas, and then up to Tulsa, where ultimately I wanted to get off in Oklahoma. And they said, oh, no, we can't do that. Why not? Well, because your, your flight actually hasn't been delayed yet. Dude, that is very loud typing. Just want you to know. So, that's from Mike. So the um, they wouldn't let me do it, but find out later on after looking at their website, it's in the policy that I should have done it. Makes me even angrier. So anyway, I leave um, Gettysburg at four in the. I get up at four in the morning. I leave at four thirty to head up to Harrisburg to make sure I get through there. And good thing I did because the TSA lines were rather long. Uh, got through, got to my gate just fine. Got on the plane, drove out to the runway. Got to the runway airplane stops pilot gets on says uh we just been notified by the tower in chicago we have a two-hour delay but since we're already pushed off from the gate we're going to call and see if we can get a little bit of relief on that comes back on 10 minutes later uh so that kind of backfired folks we now have a five-hour delay uh <laughs> we're going to try to get clearance to take you back to the gate and we'll let you know a little while later he finally takes us back to the gate so we have to go through United's nonsense, and they get us on a different flight at 10.30. Well, 9 o'clock comes rolling around, and they say, oh, that flight's canceled. <laughs> hmm. uh, in going through this without going through every single detail of it, I end up having four flights with United canceled. Because for some reason, we had to go through Chicago, even though Chicago was closed. So eventually, I got them to agree to a refund, and I went over to the Delta counter with a credit card and said, get me home now. They got me on a flight. It wasn't until 5.30. Uh, so now I'm already there for 12 hours. <laughs> um, I get out, and I get to Atlanta, I get because that's where the, the big connect, connection hub is for Delta. And we get uh, there, and there's the flight. They keep delaying my flight, but only in like five and ten minute increments. And every time they do it, they change the gate. So I'm running all over Atlanta Airport. And if you've ever been to Atlanta, it is like a sea of humanity. There's just people everywhere, and, it, and it's just free range rude. It's a clean airport, though, which is better than JFK. I ended up being about an hour, 20 minutes delayed. Um, I did get into Tulsa. Uh, a little bit just a hair shy of midnight still had about an hour and a half two hour drive to get home so i got home just at like about 1 55 a.m <sighs> then my alarm went off at 5 30 so i get up and be to work by 6 15 were there any snakes on any of the planes no but i did run over a kitten on my way to the airport what the heck <laughs> i a it, joke? No, it, it's not. It ran out. I, I slowed down, and the stupid thing froze, then ran back under my car. And oh, with, my with everything else that happened prior to that, which Duck knows about, I just lost it. And I was an emotional wreck the rest of the day. Uh, right now, I am physically and emotionally exhausted. So, do I want to do a podcast right now? If it was anything else, no. But I'm here with my good friend, the Blue Duck Gold Duck, and we are going to talk about some Pokemon, and we're going to raise my spirits, folks. So, Duck, tell me what you want to talk about first. Okay, so, I don't know if everybody remembers or not, but, like, way back in, like, episode four, I went on this whole rant about what they need to do to make Pokemon better. Yes, you did. About how I thought it was dumb that you have to breed and, like, throw Pokemon away off to the side because you bred them and they weren't good enough, right? Which happens constantly, and if you're going to get into competitive play, you're you're constantly you know Ditto is your best friend. He gets the Father of the Year award every year, <laughs> and you you are constantly just <laughs> you're constantly getting on your bike, going back and forth, back and forth, back and yep. forth, <laughs> shoving that penny, shoving that penny under the under the uh, the under the little uh, joystick, <laughs> so you can endlessly ride your bike around in the circle in Lumio City. That's how I started. I did not know about that trick. That's neat. Yeah, it's they didn't they didn't they haven't made a perfect circle in any other game since then. Okay, so you went on a, you did go on a, quite the tirade and what things you would like to see, and you you just wanted them to be able to change stats. 
I, I think, just wanted it to be easier. Yeah, and I, think, I, I wanted you to take any Pokemon and make it competitive. That's what I wanted. And I think they've done that. I think they've done that now with one of the late. And this is not leaked material, folks. This came out in an official trailer. Yes, that's the yeah. Everybody should know that. So I do know a lot of stuff that leaked, but (laughs) we are very very careful about that here. We are very very careful when it comes to leak material, and we do not leak storylines. And anytime we're going to leak material that we know is substantial, we will give you a fair warning. But um, this is not leaked material. This came out in an official trailer, and it looks like we're going to be able to change. Any Pokemon into a competitive Pokemon now. It's just a little bit of grinding. Uh, yeah. So dur- during the like game, the after the press release came out, we found out about interviews where you know Masuda said, "I I want you to be able to take your starter Pokemon or any Pokemon you play the story with and use it competitively. I don't think it's right that we build up this whole one side of the game about." you know finding partners and being friends with your pokemon and then we if you want to do anything after you beat the game you just throw them to the side because they're obviously not good enough yeah and quite frankly i mean uh, i've got pokemon it's like okay um this is great i I don't i don't need this you know your your starter may not be the most useful thing in the world and typically you do end up keeping your starter most people do but uh, you know if you ever tried doing a Nuzlocke, which I, I'm just, I'm about halfway through my first one. <laughs> um, Duck's done them quite a bit, and he's made quite a name for himself on his channel. Um, your Pokemon change often. You know, that, that one that one that you always want there, maybe not is not actually necessary, and you're going to find other stuff to change out, and it's going to be more effective in a gym. So, you know, that, that whole idea of the partner is kind of great for in story but not so much in practice (laughs) so we have an ability now that where it looks like we'll be able to um basically power train our our pokemon with with items so yeah there's a couple things that are important to a competitive pokemon and it's abilities ivies evs and nature so Ivies is something that they allowed us to change in Sun and Moon. Those are stats that each Pokemon is given at birth between 0 and 31. And if a Pokemon doesn't have 31 in most of its stats, then it's not viable for competitive use. Yeah, it, it's quite so, fr- quite frankly, people... And this has been a big problem with the VGC for years is... And, and you you know, we've... Duck has witnessed this at events where somebody whip out a computer i need to make a pokemon real quick tap 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 and upload it in their ds just add a regional nobody flinched yeah it's it's disgusting really but um but that's been the big problem because if you don't have that perfect stat you're not you're not in competitive play so they did release the golden bottle cap and regular bottle caps in uh sun and moon which it, once you level up your Pokemon to level 100, you can use the gold bottle cap and it gives it the perfect six IVs to all its stats. But you can't pass that through breeding. So you can turn one Pokemon into a perfect Pokemon. So that was one big step forward there. So that way you could like catch a legendary Pokemon and it's almost impossible to get a six IV legendary Pokemon. It's it's, it's so small. It is. And the way that I am, people get golden bottle caps for example and they were and it, it's 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 a scam <laughs> it is mm-hmm. you um would typically go get a code card from a gamestop target or best buy depending on who whose promotion it was that month and the pokemon that you would receive in your mystery gift would be the one um you know for whatever it is like a shiny lunala and it would be holding that golden bottle cap and you could then take it from there and do whatever you wanted with it there are ways to get them in game too, and there was an exploit you could do in Sun and Moon and Ultra Sun and Moon where you could get unlimited bottle caps, but it was a, it was a long grind to get there. Yeah, I actually, and then in I actually, Go, I actually found a very new way. Daily. Yeah, I found a new way to do it, but we're gonna keep that. We're gonna keep that between you and us. Okay. <laughs> so IVs check. That's that's already that's one of the biggest things you breed for, but, um, then. They uh, in this trailer we got on Wednesday, they released a thing called Mints, Mint. which Mints changed the nature of a Pokemon. Now, what a nature is is a, you know, like a a stat boost and a stat drop to one of the Pokemon stats. So some Pokemon have plus 
like their physical attack is higher, but their speed is lower, or their defense is higher, but their special attack is lower. And there's a nature for every single combination of stat boost and drop. And really what that does is they creates like four or five good natures to be, and all the other ones are just garbage. So you're hunting for the Pokemon of a specific nature. If the po- you have to breed a new one if you're if your Pokemon is the wrong nature. Or if you have a legendary and you want it with one nature, and then you have another le- you want to use a use that same legendary, like say you have a Tapu Bulu, and I want this one to have positive attack, then you catch one, you reset the game till you catch one in your game of that of that nature. And then, well, now I want one with more speed. You got to play through the whole entire game again, catch another Tapu Bulu, and then, you know, reset till you get that nature. Now you can simply give it an item, and it changes from that the first nature to the second nature as much as you want. Yeah, and I, I, you know, I know it's entertaining. It's one of the best, one of the biggest things people watch on Twitch, for example, uh, when it comes to the games, are people doing shiny hunts. Listen, I like shinies as much as the next guy, but watching somebody reset the game four and five hundred times <laughs> just to find that one shiny. And then this is the same scenario is now not only are you having to reset the game for that scenario, you actually have to catch the bloody thing so you can see what its stats are. Well, there, <laughs> that is true, but there's a way to give it a 50 50 chance of the nature you want. OK, go on. If you have a Pokemon with the, the ability trace then it has a uh, 50-50 chance of having the Pokemon. Every Pokemon you encounter has a 50-50 chance of having the nature of the Pokemon, the cha- the trace Pokemon. So okay. if I have a, for example, Gardevoir gets trace. If I have a modest Gardevoir plus special attack minus attack, then every Pokemon I encounter with that Gardevoir being the first Pokemon in my party has a 50-50 chance of being modest. I, right. I you, still have to catch, you still have to catch the legendary Pokemon. You still have to catch it. And, and the yeah. thing is, I never, I personally have <laughs> never done VGC. Um, I just haven't because of the rampant cheating. But now that we have a game that's going to be definitely harder, I'm not going to say it's impossible because there are, as, as, as determined as, as Game Freak, Nintendo, as, as determined as they are to keep people from hacking a the game, there are hackers out there that are just as determined to crack that game. So it, mm-hmm. it will happen, but it's not going to be a right away, and we don't know what the extent of what they're going to be able to do. Maybe once Pokemon Home is released, it's gonna it'll probably we'll probably see a, a, an uptick in that. Uh, but uh, you know, for at least the time being, we're going to have a, a nice solid level playing field, and I am going to give it an honest effort to get into VGC with this generation. Now, if you're asking yourself, well. Or am I immediately going to jump in the Sword and Shield? No, that's not the case. Uh, I believe it is January 3rd is what I, I saw, um, is when Sword and Shield will become legal, I, I believe. Um, don't quote me oh, yes. on that. Um, that was a post in the, in the Professor's Roundtable, and I I'm, I'm I don't have it in front of me. I'm going by what I was reading when I was very punch-drunk tired yesterday in, in an airport somewhere. Um so don't quote me on that, but it will be in January that we do switch over to Sword and Shield. So you still got a lot of Sun and Moon time left, and uh, it, uh, they actually just had their last regionals in Portland this weekend with that format. Well, there you go then. So we got we got some time to get ourselves all our hyped up and ready for January then. <laughs> but you, there's also uh, they've already announced their first online tournament, haven't they, Doug? Uh, yeah. But before we do that, we already start going over the item, so I'd rather... Okay, finish the item. Finish dude. that Go up. ahead. Go for it. So we talked about IVs with bottle caps. We talked about uh, mints with natures. And then there's the EVs. Now, normally, when you want to EV train a Pokemon, this is what everybody makes fun of the competitive players for. They say they're doing math to make good Pokemon. It's really it's really simple. It's They, they kind of give it a bad name, all the memes and stuff. But... What happens is when you're, say you battle a Zubat, Zubat's highest stat is speed. So you get one speed EV. You can get a total of 252 speed, like speed IVs to your Poke, or EVs to your Pokemon to max out its speed stat. Okay, let me stop you one second, Doug. And just <laughs> just for people that are, are listening to you talking right now, he is not talking about the Pokemon EV. He's talking about <laughs> the letters E and the letter V. 
Okay, they stand for effort values. <laughs> there you go. Maybe well, I'll just say effort values to, to avoid confusion. That might be best. <laughs> <laughs> so an effort value is something you get when you knock out a Pokemon. And you what, basically whatever its highest stat is, is the point you get. So if I knock out a Zubat, his highest stat is speed. So I get one speed effort value. Then if I get 252 speed effort va effort values, then my Pokemon has max speed. Now there's ways you can double and quadruple that so that you only have to fight like 20 Zubats. Back in the day, you did have to fight like 252, and that was that was why everybody made fun of people. But <laughs> but nowadays, you you have to fight like 20. Or you could give them the items. Now, everybody should know about these items. Protein, Zinc, Carbos. Protein! Yeah, they're all in. They're in all the games. They cost like $10,000 to buy. But what they do is they give your Pokemon 10 effort values in that stat. Okay. So, like, Carbos boosts your speed. So, your speed will go up from 0 effort values to 10 effort values. But in the other games, in the old games, you could only get that. You could only give them 10 of each vitamin. So I could give it ten uh protein. Ten carbos. And then it wouldn't it would say this Pokemon, you know, this item would have no effect because I had already boosted it to a hundred. Okay. Now you can boost it all the way up to two fifty two. They took that they took that cap off. So you can, you don't even have to battle any Pokemon to, to make your Pokemon competitive now. You just have to battle to get money so that you can buy the items. Exactly. And I imagine that's gonna be that's gonna have. That's gonna be what makes everything hard. You're gonna be grinding money instead of, you know, vitamins, mints, bottle caps. You're you're gonna be grinding one thing. It it might be that thing, the currency in the wild area too. That's another thing. It might be. Luckily, Nintendo is not about microtransactions. Otherwise, <laughs> I would join in possibly join in in the hysteria of people making horses butts of themselves in the comments they've been making towards game freak um we're not going to go into that because we want to maintain a positive attitude and a positive outlook towards the game at least that's what duck tells me and, and i'm i'm gonna i'm <laughs> going to defer to his judgment on that um yeah I mean, it's uh, people are complaining but uh, they need to pull their heads out of their butts that's all we're going to say about it so keep going about your 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 your, your power training techniques teach us oh wise master <laughs> so the final thing they the final item they added was the exp candy which is basically a rare candy but now it can boost more than one level so we saw them give a extra large uh exp candy to a pokemon and it gave it thirty thousand xp cha-ching <laughs> yeah so they're they're making it way easier you generally want to get a pokemon to around level 50 or maybe level 70 if it wants to get a certain move for a move set. Like, you know, Dragonite doesn't learn Outrage till like level, you know, 65. So you would if you want Outrage on your Dragonite, you have to level it all the way up to level 65, even though in competitive Pokémon, all Pokémon's levels are leveled down or up to 50. Right. But you still need those base stats. Right, you need those moves that they learn. Um and then this this is another big thing. There's a thing called egg moves in Pokemon, which most Pokemon can only learn certain egg moves if they are bred with a parent that knows that egg move. So if I want a Gengar that knows Parish Song, I have to find a Pokemon in its egg group that has Parish Song to breed the Gengar and get a get a Ghastly with a with a, with Parish Song. See, I, I didn't know anything about egg groups until like <laughs> the other day when you were talking to me about it, and the fact that we we I, I thought you know Pokemon bred with their own and ditto i thought that was it but now you're telling me that it's y'all you know no, this you know farfetch can can breed with you know parasect or whatever I, i'm just picking two but <laughs> i i did not know about these egg groups until just until you were telling me about it the other day and i was like really this this is weird <laughs> yeah, so as long as the pokemon are in the same egg group they can breed and then the offspring will be the female of the species so if it's a female far-fetched with a male Pidgeotto or Pidgeot, then the ba all their babies will be far-fetched. Interesting to know. Cause we're gonna yeah. we're gonna start a breeding program and we're gonna become Pokemon breeders and we're gonna we're gonna sell Pokemans. <laughs> 
Uh, I mean, hey, if I can monetize it, I will. But there is going to be. I am going to be very generous with what I what I give out. <laughs> uh, well, I'm going to need that ditto because uh, I, I was starting to in the airport, <laughs> and then uh, I I threw one pokeball and it ran away and it broke my chain and I got disheartened and I couldn't pick it up again. Yeah, I feel you. <laughs> so anyhow. And the final change they made, which is not huge, but you can nickname traded Pokemon now. As long as they didn't already have a nickname. I mean So before it's whenever not you if huge, I, but I mean it's I guess it's something. I mean I, nice. I don't I don't like naming them anyway because I always forget what they are when I read them on a list. <laughs> yeah, I like naming them. I like to give a find a quirky nickname to give them, but I think that comes from playing Nuzlocks. Banana Jet? Yep. <laughs> Shout out to Banana Jet MVP. <laughs> and Sadar Jet. <laughs> and Sadar Jet. Well, yeah, she didn't come in until the end, but yeah. They were the strongest members of my team by far. By far. Better than the dumb Zapdos. Yeah, well, you did complete your Nuzlocke challenge, so that's that's important for I people the Elite to know. Four. You, you did get through there. You got the Elite Four. I think um, I lost seven Pokemon in total, which isn't that bad. You did not lose the Raz Hammer, though. Nope, I did not lose lose hair across the Raz Hammer, named after you. <laughs> <laughs> Which was, uh, it, it got epic there. I mean, it, it, right there at the end, you could seem like you kind of like breeze through it. Uh, but the build up to the end is what I think, um, what, ha- what has a lot of drama to it. And I think that's what people were really getting into. Yeah, I want to be in more high stakes situations, but I don't want to lose any more Pokemon. That's <laughs> That makes sense. <laughs> I know, I feel you. I feel you 100%. Um, I, I've been recording my let's go eevee uh, nuzlocke and um if you go on my youtube channel you'll definitely or actually on our youtube channel i'm sorry because that's what right folks we have merged and we have now become the mount moon crew on youtube and all of our videos are on the same channel now so anyhow i have a, a let's play in there and uh there, there are definitely some high drama moments in some of my latest videos when it comes to uh, uh, important Pokemon getting involved in battles, and we'll leave it at that. <laughs> so, the, with everything with the VGC um, and coming out with with Sword and Shield, I mean, I th- I think if you're gonna get involved in competitive VGC play, this is definitely the time. I'm 100% agree. This is definitely going to be the time to do it. Um, if you've ever been on the fence, now's the time. Uh, and plus, uh, the Nintendo Switch is a cheap console. It's cheap as you know the 3DS was when it first came out. It, it, with the with the Switch Lite, you're talking a two hundred dollar investment just for the for the console. That's incredibly cheap. I don't see. Yeah. Uh, so, it, with the game, you know, you're. you're it's a heck of a lot cheaper than cards. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> you make one six. You have, you pay sixty dollars once, or you pay however much money you pay to you know buy into the next set. Yeah, really. And then it's oh, this one card you need is worth you know thirteen dollars a piece, and you need a set of them. And it's I mean it's here or there. There's pluses to pluses or minuses to each. <laughs> but yeah. So what do you want to move on to now, Duck? Uh, now we can talk about the online competition. So, yeah, we do have a, the announced online competition. The first, the first online competition uh, involving Sword and Shield. Now, are we talking, this is going to be like, um, oh, what, what am I calling? The the global, oh, heck, I just forgot the name entirely. Just entirely, global link. Is it, is it going to be a global link tournament? It's basically like that. Basically, they made a custom rule set and... Oh. Here you go. They haven't announced what any of the prizes are going to be, but usually it's some kind of Pokemon with an exclusive move or, you know, an ability. Like one time they gave out a Dragonite with Barrier, which it doesn't normally learn, but it was like a throwback to Red and Blue where Lance's Dragonite had the move Barrier, even though it's not a level up move for it. Okay, fair enough. So it's kind of novel, kind of cool to have. And the basically the way this is, is... It's called the it's called Galar Beginnings. It's any Pokemon in the Galar decks, except for Mew, Zacian, and Zamazenta, and all those were confirmed already. I mean obviously the cover legendaries Man, and then I they hope said, so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> those were all confirmed. If there's more banned Pokemon that aren't confirmed, I don't I don't even know what they are. 
Right on. Registration is from November 15th, the, the day the game releases, to December 5th. And the tournament will last from December 6th to through the 8th. And you can do 15 battles a day. So on, it's, I think it's a Saturday and Sunday. You can do 15 battles on Saturday, 15 battles on Sunday. And they're going to be single battles. It's so 30 battles over the week, course of the weekend. You shouldn't have trouble finding an opponent because everyone's no, going to have the game. I got it. Uh, right. Yeah. And you probably get a lot of easy, if you know what you're doing, you probably get a lot of easy wins. Because there's going to be tons of people that don't know what they're doing. This is very true. Uh, people will enter, enter it. Oh, that just looks like fun and smack, and then they completely uh, get knocked <laughs> out. And never want to play in the VGC in their life because that was just horrible. <laughs> they're like, "What's what's an Ivy?" <laughs> they're like, "Some kid in your basement just beat me." <laughs> so I'm excited for that tournament. I have not played competitive battling in a couple years, so. It might be a good uh, confidence booster if I can get in there and do well. Yeah, I mean, uh, I'm, I'm definitely I'm going to jump in on it. I mean, I don't see why I wouldn't. It looks like it's going to be fun. I've already got a uh, team in my head. I don't I don't know for sure because I got to like research the newer Pokemon more. But well, you know, not, we're not going to ask you to reveal your team. We're not going to ask well, you I... to. <laughs> I won't yet, but I mean, I might talk about it before this tournament. Yeah, like, and get people with a me. few pointers. <laughs> on what Pokemon are good. So yeah, definitely. Uh, if you're gonna get the game, uh, consider doing that because we want to see the VGC actually get you know back into its heyday, really, because that's where Pokemon competitive play came from um, in the United States. Anyways, everybody wanted to. I, I remember going in, in after everyone ate their lunch real quick in school. Then we all ran over and pulled out <laughs> link cables and we started hooking them up because everyone tried to do that nonsense with the. Uh, but the sensors on top that never worked. So we all had link cables and we were like trading back and forth. And everyone's like, Oh, we're going to go to like, we're going to get down to the truck and get Mew. And then they never did. And uh, <laughs> then we, Oh, we're going to do the rare candy exploit. Okay. <laughs> did you have a problem where like only one out of 10 people had a link cable that worked? No, uh, usually it was only one person that had a link cable. <laughs> Okay, so I, I remember, like, everybody had a link cable, right? Everybody gets one at a yard sale or something, but, like, only one of one out of ten will work properly. <laughs> no, I And didn't. then, like, you can't move the Game Boys once they're connected. Like, it'll it'll disconnect if you if you shake them too much. Yeah, they, they definitely were a little iffy on, <laughs> on their attachment, but uh, I, I think I was like, everyone had to come to me because I had the link cable. <laughs> <laughs> And then the last thing they, they told us about the video games is that there's actually going to be events for uh, Gigantamax Pokemon. Go on. And so basically from a time period of November 15th to sometime in January. Sometime in January. <laughs> but I, don't, I don't think they had the date. I would have put the date in the outline if there was a date there. Uh, <laughs> but some Pokemon are going to be easier to find in Gigantamax raids. So they said Gigantamax raids are going to be very rare. You know, so these are going to be Pokemon with boosted spawn rates. Butterfree will be boosted in both games. Dreadnought will be boosted in Sword, and Corviknight will be boosted in Shield. Okay. I didn't. And then I'm sure after January, then that'll change to a different set of three Pokemon. Okay. Now you'll still be able to find Dreadnought in Shield, and you'll still be able to find Corviknight in Sword, but it'll be more rare. I don't know what the difference is. Like how, your, your what spawn the rates are going to be different. Probability is. Exactly. So, the, yeah, while well, the spawn rates are different. Okay. I'll so see. that actually motivated me to get both games, but maybe if you're attached to one of those particular Pokemon, it'll help you decide which game you're going to get. I, I'm, I pre-ordered Sword. Um, I'm sorry. Yeah, Sword. So I'm definitely getting Sword. I'm not going to change that. Um, I'm pretty sure I'm playing Shield first. If that makes you... Ha I mean, that's good, because then we can trade. Right. <laughs> I mean, I mean I'm going to have five people in the room right next to me. Playing, yeah, you're, so. you're, you're having an epic game weekend. I mean... We are going to have five 40-inch TV, at least 40-plus inch TV set up. Yeah, you're you're absolutely crazy. Um, and hopefully, <laughs> make, make make sure the people that come bring uh, you know soap. <laughs> oh, there. I, well, I said it was bring your own everything, so I hope they do. <laughs> you tried to get me to stay, and I, I wish I could have. <laughs> yeah, it would have been awesome. 
yeah, well, I'm, I'm kind of, you know, have responsibilities and <laughs> in the form of children yeah. and a, and a job. Your priorities straight, dude. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that, that's my priorities are so straight. That's why I had to spend all that time in the in the airports, unfortunately. So, uh, yeah, you're you're definitely gonna make make sure you take some pictures because we're all gonna want to see some stuff from that party because it sounds like it's gonna be epic. Epic. Uh, here's the hoping. <laughs> yeah, and hopefully you get done early enough by Monday that we can have a podcast again. Cause, you know, I have a feeling you're just gonna. Oh, sorry, can't play. <laughs> gotta, gotta, gotta yeah. grind. <laughs> <laughs> I have a feeling um, that I'll have it beat pretty quick. Oh, you'll have it beat sometime Sunday, I'm sure. That's Man. the plan, at least. So I think that's all we got. I'm, for not, the... I'm no... not sleeping till I'm the champion. Till you're the champ. <laughs> I'm the champion. <laughs> <laughs> Do we have anything left on the VGC front, Duck? That's it for video game. So what are we moving on to? Uh, now we're going to move on to the uh, TCG news. Which there is some. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> yeah, really. We did have a... After the you know, Cosmic Eclipse came out, everything just kind of went and died off for a while. I think it's because they're focusing on promoting the games. Which, and uh, here it is. So I'm sure after the games come out, there'll be a ton. They're going to ca- play catch-up real quick on, uh, you know, Pokemon... Or on uh, TCG news. Yeah, so, and you know, as many people realize, uh, TCG, you always have, uh, every year they start out, either we're going to have all um, standard events at the beginning of the year for the most part, and then expanded at the second half. <clears throat> this year is one of those years where most of the events in the front half of the season are expanded. So that means the second half of the year we go standard and things start getting really kind of funky because your your decks are, your decks are limited then. So we, we start coming up with more... I don't know, uh, desperate decks. <laughs> <laughs> um, but so what do you got up for us on the TCG that you came up with? Duck? So we covered a couple of weeks ago, we covered this uh, five sealed deck uh, pack you can buy in Japan. And we have not seen any word that we're going to get those, which I wouldn't be surprised if we don't, but they're V decks. And basically they have one of the Pokemon V that one of the first Pokemon V revealed which was Celebi, Victini, Keldeo, Tapu Koko, and Regirock. So they're gonna what they're gonna be doing in Japan is hosting sealed tournaments where I guess five people sign up, or maybe you get one of the you you sign up for the tournament, and you get one of those five decks, and then you play a sealed format. It sounds super fun. I really wish we would do do that. It sounds like Ma- it, I think Magic does stuff like that with their uh, Planeswalker decks. They do. They do. Okay, so I mean, that's the format could exist, and it'd be nice if we did some stuff like that. It'd make, it'd make it just expand the formats, yeah. make it a little bit more interesting. Imagine a pre-release where everybody has a GX. That sounds pretty cool. <laughs> I'll tell you what, every just about every pre-release I participate in, I, I, I pull a GX, but it's never anything I can use, so I just throw it in the box. All anyway. right, <laughs> so is that stage two, and you didn't get one of the pre-evolutions, or or it's just you know, well, that's a grass type, and everything else I have is water type. <laughs> you know, whatever. <laughs> yeah. So, so also... if you participate in one of those, you get a promo card, Meowth V. Yeah, and, and I'm, wait, I, I, I'm. Gonna, you sent me a bunch of the new cards that came out, including that Meowth V card. Um, and for those of you that are watching this on either YouTube or on our live Twitch stream, I will show them on screen. But I'm warning Duck now that they're all on one slate because I was doing it on the fly. Oh. Uh, so pulling that up now. <laughs> We do have the Meowth V card, and it, you know, it, it, it. I kind of like the design. I'm waiting to see what they do with the English version of it. Um, it, it seems like we're we're going back to what the Pokemon used to look like, not not the uh, over stylized versions. At least yeah. that's my opinion. But we also have a bunch of new cards on the screen as well. So you want to talk about those too, Duck? Uh, yeah, the next one is uh, Quick Ball. Which is is not a reprint, by the way. There was a card called Quick Ball that came out a long time ago. I I only know that because I collect the, you know, the po- different Pokeball cards. So I have one, but like I've never really worried about what it did. But the old effect was reveal cards from your deck until you reveal a Pokemon. 
show that Pokemon to your opponent and put it into your hand. Then you shuffle the, the cards back into your deck. Now it's discard a card from your hand and, and then you uh, search your deck for a basic Pokemon, reveal it, and put it in your hand. So kind of similar effect. It was kind of like Great Ball is now back in the day. Except it was guaranteed to hit. And now it's like a, like a Nest Ball and an Ultra Ball put together. Okay, yeah, I mean, Nest Ball and Ultra Ball were huge things to lose in the standard format. So getting something back that might that might come do have a similar effect would probably be very helpful. Uh, and, and it's gonna people that you know maybe you know had some decks that were got taken out with the format maybe we'll be able to reinvent them a little bit and bring them back in. I think so, and I think they're gonna put. They might be pushing. So I've talked about how they like rotate like what they support. So like for, you know, for a while it was big basics. Then they made, uh, you know, non, non GXs that could take out the GXs. So it was better for you to play one prize attackers, that kind of deal. It looks like they might be promoting, like, one prize attacker stage, stage twos. Or I guess any stage two in general. It might be like that. Like you know, there was a format not too long ago where Gardevoir GX was the best. Even though it was a stage two and kind of inconsistent to get out, it was just so powerful that it didn't matter how hard it was to get it. So we might be seeing a format like that come back to counter the Pokemon V. That's definitely any time that we have, you know, an ability to not run the the big attackers and and go at it with a smaller cards, so that people are always not just running the same two or three decks. I am always in support of that. Yeah, I agree too. Uh, the The best format is like a for healthy format. I don't think it should have inf infinite decks, but if it has like five or six, that I think that's solid. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it, right now you're seeing Malamar, Malamar, and oh look over there, another Malamar. So <laughs> I mean, that's just the meta right now, unfortunately, because it's such an effective attacker. Um, but you know, you do anything that's going to get us. Uh, more going on and it's just it's it's always a plus and you can't complain about it I don't think so the, uh, uh, the other item C is the evolution incense and mm -hmm. I think that is that what incense looks like in uh, Pokemon Go? that is exactly what incense looks like in Pokemon wow, Go just the colors are a little bit different <laughs> now there are incense in the games but they don't look quite like that no um, it, it, it looks like actually like um, like an incense vaporizer for yeah. essential oils. But, you know, that's a great card. What's the function on it? It is search your deck for an evolution Pokemon, reveal it, and put it into your hand. So you combo that with Quick Ball, and you can get the basic Pokemon and the evolution Pokemon right off the bat. And that's another great card, but I think we're missing the true point of all the new cards are coming out. We're getting new energy cards. <laughs> That's uh, yeah, what I'm I mean, excited about, man. We're getting new energy <laughs> cards. <laughs> I think this is... I, I This might be the best-looking energy. There was the ones with the lightning bolts behind them from a while ago. Those are really cool. And then, obviously, the ones with the Pokemon silhouettes are great as well. But I think this might be better. A hollow version of, of this new energy might be the best. Yeah, so my... we are getting new stylized energies. Uh, we, we've only seen the... At least I have only seen the 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 fire energy card and we actually have fire on the card so as stupid as that sounds it, it being that you know it's such a simple stupid little I think it's great that we're getting new designs this is the second redesign we've had in over in in a year uh, uh yeah so, this is usually it's it's not this quick no usually it takes several years and this is two within one so I think that's great too but we also now, have one more supporter card too uh, the supporter is bead which is a character in the in Sword and Shield, one of the one of the rivals for the main character, and his effect is attach a basic poke or attach a basic energy from your hand to one of your bench Pokemon, which means you can use it to get a second energy attachment for the turn, which is always a bonus and something that could it, on a, in a clutch situation really save your bacon. It could be, but I think it's niche too. Like you're not going to run this in every deck. We've already seen supporters that are similar, and they don't quite. Um, they don't quite see much play, but say you have an attack that boosts damage with energy, then this might see play in that. And 
it very well could and and we have seen cards that oh that's not going to be good for anything and all of a sudden it becomes the basis of someone's <laughs> deck we, <laughs> we yeah, i'm it, not the i'm not the one who builds the decks i just <laughs> i see what gets played yeah and, and <laughs> but there's always you know, the next set that comes out could have a card that pairs with it that we're just not seeing yet so it'd be interesting i mean I'm, i i love looking at new cards especially when they are similar to old cards with a twist just to change it up a little bit so what else you got for me duck uh i think that's about it for the outline that's right. uh, i do have a question for you though oh god the energy card right it has the fire on it yes do you think it's less novel if, like, the water energy also has that same, like, what if it's tr treating the uh, energy like a moving object so it's on fire because it's moving so fast and not necessarily because it's a fire energy? So, like, a water energy would have that same visual on it. You shut up. I mean, I don't know. If there's bubbles behind the water energy, it better that's be amazing. There better be bubbles <laughs> or else it's stupid. <laughs> and, there, like and there is your the, uh, there is your electric. episode of negativity from Raz <laughs> <laughs> okay well folks like I said with with everything that we had going on this weekend um, there was something else I wanted to talk about but I'm, I'm thinking I might want to save it for an episode in and of itself and that is how to get started if in you know you want to become a Pokemon professor, Duck and I are both professors. Uh, I am a stage one professor. I believe your stage one is too, aren't you? Aren't you, Duck? Um, are you still no, rocking the basic? I stopped, I stopped when they told me to do VGC rules, and I'm like, oh, I don't know those. And but now you know everything about them. Well, no, <laughs> not yet. I'm gonna not read yet. the rule book though. <laughs> um, and and we've both judged at, at large events and. It, it stemmed from the fact that we had um, wanted to expand what Pokemon was in because um, in our area it was devoid or people that were running them were running them in less than stellar ways. So I think we might end up dedicating an entire episode on what you need to do to uh, become a Pokemon professor and start a league maybe. Uh, there's different kinds of leagues, and I think I think we could we could spend an entire episode just talking about that. Um, but I am just I am so like off my game tonight uh, because of how exhausted I am <laughs> that I can tell you right now as soon as we're I get done recording, uh, I'm gonna start pulling the audio for everything, and then I'm pulling the screen down, and there's a bed behind here. There's a bed back there, and I'm going to go hug it because <laughs> um, i got to be working again in the morning. But So if you have any questions that you'd like us to answer as it pertains to the Pokemon Professor program, uh, I, I, please, I encourage you, get on social media and contact us so that we can try to answer those questions on that episode. It's, probably, it's not going to be next week. Next week is going to be Sword and Shield. <laughs> Sword and Shield. I will be reviewing Sword and Shield and its completion on monday yeah i can guarantee you next week's episode is going to be entirely sword and shield um but maybe you know sometime in the next month or so we're going to do a, do an episode strictly on the professor program because i think we um are not really doing doing a service to the community without trying to expand the community so look for that questions for it like on facebook you can go online just search for at mount moon podcast on youtube you can search for the da, 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 the Mount Moon Crew <laughs> that took me a minute and you'll find uh, videos on if you search for the Mount Moon Review Podcast you'll find us on YouTube on Twitter you can find me at at the underscore Razgri01 you can find us uh, you you don't have a you don't have social media yet Duck now you have a Twitter. Have Twitter you do have a Twitter which is the Blue Duck Gold Duck without the E I've been spending all my time on Discord. Yeah, we do have a Discord. Um, if you contact us on any form of social media, we'll send you an invite. Uh, we do share a lot of stuff on Discord. Uh, we're trying to grow that community, and it is becoming very lively. Uh, and I, I think it's we get some more people in there. We share deck lists. We talk about the game. We're organizing trades. We're organizing raids. And it's just a, it's a good time to be had by all. So I think that is all we're going to have for this week, unless you've got anything else you want to add here in the last minute, Duck. If so, please speak up. That's it. 
he literally just shook his head at me, folks. So <laughs> that being said, I, I wish you all a fabulous week. Look forward to Sword and Shield, and I've just found out that my GameStop is going to sell it to me at 11.01 p.m. What? Yeah. Because it's because it's midnight in another part of America, they can do that? I guess so. <laughs> what? That, that just means we start at the same time. We Are do. you streaming it? Are you going to start your stream at 11? Or whenever you get home? I would... I might. But Let me know. Well, cause... I'm telling you, I told you already, on the other side of this screen is a bed. <laughs> oh, yeah. And there might be a wife in that bed. <laughs> Because she still works on Fridays and I don't. <laughs> so you got five auto viewers if you one of those five TVs. So you have four auto viewers. One of those five TVs is uh, dedicated to watching other people stream while we play. So, but I, I can tell you uh, there there would definitely be some streams coming out from Sword and Shield from me this weekend. Uh, we have discussed the possibility of not right away because it's going to be so oversaturated. It's not going to be funny of doing some kind of Soul Link. Uh, so look for look forward to that. We we'll look look for you on social media. Uh, we are gonna start doing stuff again with Extra Life soon. Other than that, Duck, get us out of here so I can go to bed. All right, everybody. Until next time, just remember: if it's too good to be blue, it's probably gold. Have a good night, folks. Just because your card is magic, you think you're sick because you killed my life, orb, baby. Do you dare to not? I'm coming at you like a dark horse I know you're gonna throw, gonna throw You're gonna throw a stone, throw a stone But I got that lucky chance, lucky chance There's no critical hits